Welcome back to Papa's Workshop. Today I want to answer the most often asked question, and that is what software do I use? Well, it boils down to really three different softwares that I use. If I'm using the laser, it's going to be the Lightburn software. If I'm using the X-Carve over here, I'll use the easel. And it's great for doing the quick little projects that I need to be able to do, and I can make changes very fast and be able to carve other projects. But then if I'm doing something more detailed and I want to be able to have some different characteristics in the project that I can't do with easel, then I'm going to use this CNC machine and I'm going to use the VCAR Pro. So it boils down to three different software packages, all depending on what type of project that I'm doing. Lasers, light burn, quick little easy project would be easel and the VCAR Pro if I'm doing a little bit more of a complex project. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm carving a sign that has the texture on the background and I'm using the VCAR Pro. The first thing that you'll notice when I open up VCAR Pro is I do have a new version that's available. And no, I'm not going to be uploading that today. I'm gonna to use the existing version that I currently have. Now I created this file already so I want to come over and just open up the existing file and show you what I'm going to be doing. Before I get started actually showing you how I designed this sign, I want to be able to let you know there's more than one ways to be able to create this sign. I'm trying to keep it very simple, very straightforward and easy to understand. I know that many of you are going to be making comments and I welcome those comments on different shortcuts that you can use to be able to create the same sign. So please, by all means, share those comments and I'll be able to share them with the audience. But for my purpose, I'm going to keep it very simple, very straightforward in the design of this sign. This is a sign that I'm working on and it is to replace a sign in an existing subdivision that has just really depleted and worn out. I wanted to be able to create the sign as close to exactly the same as the original sign that's up there. And one more thing that I want to point out to you is that this sign is being donated to the local homeowners association for a particular subdivision in the area. My son was driving by and noticed this keep right sign that was already up looked absolutely horrible and falling apart. And it had definitely outlasted its usefulness. And in conjunction with that, he was able to talk to the homeowners association and said and volunteered me to be able to make this sign and I'm happy to do it. So this is not a paid sign. This is something that we're donating to the homeowners association for a particular uh, subdivision in the area. Now, if you look up close, this sign has really seen a lot of wear and has literally fallen apart on the post and it needs to be replaced as soon as possible. My goal is to duplicate this sign in exactly the same size and the letter style as possible. So the first step was to measure everything and get the best accurate measurements possible to duplicate this sign in VCAR Pro. This is how the completed sign is going to look. And this portion right here, this band is actually three quarters of an inch. Then it had a quarter inch strip right through here. And then this black line was a quarter inch. These letters were three inches tall on both the word keep and write. And this arrow was a specific size that I had um, just duplicated. I measured the actual sign and uh, realized that this was an inch and a half uh, wide. And this was actually six and five eighths of an inch. And then of course I added the arrow to it. So this is the sign that I'm creating to be able to replace the existing sign in this particular subdivision. The background is the textured background that I'm going to be putting into this sign to give it more of a wood natural type look. Of course, this is all gonna be black and the background with the PVC is gonna be the white. By using the PVC to create this sign, hopefully it will last many years to come. Now let's get back to the VCAR Pro and show you how I designed it. I want to start off with a brand new file. This is going to be a single sided. 
The size of this will be 18 inches by 23 inches. The PVC material is three quarters of an inch thick and this is in inches. I will use the zero Z position down at the bottom left and it's gonna be on the material surface. And again, it'll be located at the bottom left, which will be the X zero and Y zero position, which is right down here. As far as the resolution, I do not need that. I can go with the standard resolution and the material setting. Canadian maple is fine. There's really not a PVC setting in here. So from there, I'll just click OK. So this is the work area that I have to work with now, and it's slightly larger than the actual sign. To begin with, I will start with the rectangle, and I want the rectangle to be a total of 17.625 by 22.625. And it is going to be the square corners. And so I'll go ahead and create that. And we'll close that window. Now, one of the things that I could have done is just mark the X, Y, zero position, but I didn't. But I can come right up here to the align and I can click on the center and that puts it exactly in the center of the material. One thing I want you to realize is there's many different ways to do the exact same item. With this highlighted now as the outer edge of this sign, I want to use the offset tool and I want to be able to create an offset inward and that offset is going to be three quarters of an inch. And that's what the existing sign looked like. So I'll create the offset and I have my next line. So that takes care of that outer border. From there, I need to be able to offset this line again over a quarter of an inch. So I'll select the offset and I want this to move inward. This time it's going to be 0.25 of an inch. I'll create that one. Now you can see my black line, then this would be a white line and I need one more to show that inner one. We're gonna create that as a quarter inch offset also. So that takes care of all of my border. It's just that simple. And realize, I know there's multiple ways to do this. This is just a easy, simple way to be able to accomplish this task. Next step, let's go ahead and add the text. Now this was the timed Roman text so I am going to use the text menu right here and add my text into this. And I need the word keep and the word write. This box pops up when you create the text and this is gonna be in all caps. And it'll be K-E-E-P. I do want the text height to be the three inches and I'll just hit the close and there it is. Now I can highlight this and slide it anywhere that I want it, but that'll put it right at the center point. Next, let's add the word right down here at the bottom. Text icon, we'll type in the word right. It's still the three inches and we'll put that in place. We'll slide that right down here. And now you notice how this is really, really close together. And that's not going to work. You can actually separate these individual letters. And you notice the same thing down here. This is just way too tight. Come back over here to this icon. And now you can see how this has changed. And I can hover over the spot, hold down the shift key, and then tap the left mouse and that spreads it out. And I can come over to the neck, in between the next letter, and in between the next letter, and spread that out, and that looks a whole lot better. And we'll come back to the select tool, we'll select everything, and let's make sure 
that it is in the center. And that looks good. We'll do the same thing now with the word right because that's just entirely too close. Select this icon. I'm going to hold down the shift key and by clicking the left mouse that increases the space. If I want to be able to reduce that space, release the um, shift key and you can see that will reduce the space between the letters. It's just that simple to be able to get your spacing exactly the way that you want it. From there, I'm going to come back to the select tool and we'll highlight this, double click it, and we can make sure that it is centered. And you can see how it snaps right into place. If you don't like that, you see how this is touching. We can move this a little bit at a time by holding down the shift key and using the right arrow. You can see how that moves. If I hit the control key, you can see it moves very slowly. And that you can set up in the settings. So there, that is now centered with this spacing exactly the way that I want it. Next, we gotta create an arrow. I'm gonna start off with my rectangle tool again, and I need this rectangle, 6.625, and on the y-axis, this was 1.5 inches. So this is 6.625, it's an inch and a half wide. We'll go ahead and create that and we'll close it. We'll bring this down over into the area where I want it. Double click it, grab this, and we'll slide it over, keeping that right there in the center. Next, we need to make the point for my arrow. To do that, I'm gonna come up to this polygon tool and I'm gonna select three. Now, when you start off, it usually has, if I remember correctly, five or six or seven, but I need three. So I'm creating a triangle, and I know that the uh, width of this arrow right here in this direction is actually three and a half inches. And it's asking for the radius. So three and a half inches, that's going to be one and three quarters. And then I can create this. And we'll close that out and I want to bring that up into this space right here and I want to rotate this 90 degrees now I can just use this little handle and rotate just like that and that works just fine if I want to get this specific degree I can do that also the next thing is this point is not long enough. The simplest way is just grab it and pull the point out as long as you want it. Now put that in place. This is approximately where it needs to be. We'll highlight both of these and then I'll come over to the weld function, click it, and that eliminates that line right there. That completes the arrow. Back to the select tool and let's make sure that this is in the center. So that looks real good. I'm gonna bring that up. So that literally completes the sign. The only thing that's left to do is to be able to go over and assign the tool paths. I wanna click on this little uh, icon right here. That brings me over to the uh, tool path menu. And the first tool path that I'm going to do is this cutout right here. I'm going to highlight this one, hold down the shift key, and we will select that. And all of this is, is a little pocket. So I'll use the pocket, and I have the eighth inch end mill in here. This is a quarter inch cutout. Using the eighth inch end mill will work just fine. We're only going to cut down 0.1 of an inch. Everything else here is going to look good. I can rename this if I wish, but I can go ahead and calculate it, and that's what that little pocket's going to look like. Now, I want to come back to the 2D view, and we'll take off the tool path, and I want to be able to select this one right here, and then hold down the shift key, and we're going to do 
this pocket right here in this area. Come back up here to the pocket and we're gonna clear this out with a larger bit. And again, we're gonna go down 0.1 of an inch. In this case, we're gonna use a three quarter inch in mill. We'll select. Okay, there we go. There's my three quarter inch and we'll close that out. And at this point, this will clear it out with the three quarter inch bit. And then you have an eighth inch of end, uh, end mill that'll come back and do the final. I'm gonna leave everything else right now, just fine. And now you can see what that's gonna look like. And you can see it created two tool paths, one for the larger tool path, and then the second one for the um, detail. So let's take a look at it. Let's reset this and then preview it. And this is what a three quarter inch bit. Now you see the detail where it doesn't pick up right here and it doesn't have all the detail in this area. But when we go back to the detail with the eighth inch end mill and preview that one, then you can see how it cleans up all these different spaces in here and that gives the detail that we need. So that looks real good. The next I wanna be able to come up to the texture and a lot of the texturing is already taken care of for you. And you can change this. But now this is cut down 0.1 of an inch. So the start depth will be 0.1 of an inch. This is very, uh, this will give you the max cut depth and that'll be fine. You can change that if you wish to the minimum depth, to the max depth. You can, all these are variable. I want to be able to have these cuts longer. So if I go with 1.75, I can just make that change. The overlap, 30% is fine. There's my step over. So all of these can control what that texture will look like. And you can play with the different settings and see what works best for you. The other thing that's very important is this boundary vector. If you have this at zero, this is going to cut in to these letters. Now we're using an eighth inch end mill, uh, excuse me, we're using an eighth inch ball nose bit. So you want to be able to come in about 0 0.06 of an inch for that offset. And that way, when that bit is cutting, it'll stop before it gets to your lines and your text. From there, we'll go ahead and calculate this. We'll preview, we'll reset it, and we'll preview this one. And now you can see what this text is gonna look like, and you can see how the letters are nice and sharp. Now, if it doesn't give you that sharpness that you're looking for, let's preview that again. Now see how it's a little bit jagged there? We need to change that. So we'll come back to the texture menu. We'll make this a little bit larger. Let's make this at 0 0.08. Yeah, I want to preview this now. So I reset my preview. I want to preview all of the tool paths. You can see the three quarter, you can see the detail, and you can see the texture. And you can see how that texture bit will come right up to the edge but it still leaves a nice crisp line around all of the letters. I wanna go back to this one one more time. I wanna change this to 0 0.08 again and calculate that one more time. Let's see if we can get just a little bit closer. I'll reset this and I wanna preview all of the tool paths. And you can see that clears that out just fine. So that looks really good. I think I'm gonna leave that just the way it is. Now I need to go ahead and add in this next line. So let's close this. Now I wanna come back to the 2D version so I can highlight this line right here and hold down the shift key and this line. 
I need to be able to create that little small pocket right there. So we're going to create the pocket tool path. We're going to use we're going to use just the eighth inch end mill to be able to do that. And that should work just fine. Let's calculate it. There's my tool path right here. I'm going to reset everything. We're going to preview all of the tool paths. And there it is. That looks really good. The last thing we need to do is create the cutout around this outer edge. So we'll close this one and we'll come back to the um, 2D version and I need to click on this outer line right here. That will take care of the cutout. So this time I need to do the profile tool path and I want to be able to cut this down to the 0.76 of an inch. Remember the material is 0.75 of an inch thick. That will ensure that it goes all the way through. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill for this. As far as the editing the passes, we can edit the passes, but let's just take it slow. If you wanted to change it, it's just a matter of clicking this right there and you can change it. I'll just go ahead and put this at the seven. And then we'll click OK. I do want this to cut on the outside and I do want to add the uh, tabs on this. We'll make these a half inch long, eighth of an inch thick. I think that will be fine to be able to do this project. And then from there, I do want to add the ramps. We'll ra make the ramps at two inches long and the angle will be 20 degrees to be able to slope into that. We can have a choice on that. You can make it where it's just strictly the two inch slope and it will decide on how much, or you can do the angle and have the specific amount. I think I'm just gonna stick with the two inches. From there, I'm going to calculate. This will cut all the way through the material and that's what we want and we need to define the actual location of the tabs. So we'll come back to here, take off the tool path. We'll come down to the tabs. We need to edit the tabs and then we can actually put these tabs exactly where you want it. You can see when I hover over the tool path line, I click this with the left mouse and that pushed the tab exactly where I want it. I think that will look good and that will secure the material. So I'll hit close. From there, we'll come down and calculate this and let's preview everything. So we'll reset and we will review all of the various tool paths. And so there's the completed sign. So I think that is gonna look really, really good. And I think it's now time to go over and set up the machine and start doing this. Of course, the last step is to be able to go right here and save all of the different tool paths. Now I've already done that, so I'm not gonna save it again. Okay, the design work is all done. Now we can move into the shop for the fun part. The material that I'm using is a one by eight trim board. And this is made out of PVC. And unfortunately, when I picked this up at the big box store, it was rather warped. But I still have to be able to work with it. Now this sign is 22 and 5 eighths of an inch, but I don't want to cut it that close. The length that I'm actually cutting this board is 24 inches. So that will give me a little bit of room on the sides of this sign. I need to have three pieces that I can actually glue together, each of them 24 inches. That will give me enough room for the width of the sign, which is 17 and 5 eighths of an inch. I decided to make this where the lines were on the vertical. I could just as easily have cut it a different length and made it where the joints were horizontal but this is what I chose to do. 
the lines are going to be vertical on this sign. The next consideration is to look at this edge. This is the rounded edge. So if I put these two joints together, you're going to see that joint. It's going to be highly visible. To be able to solve that problem, I need to take this over to the joiner and joint this edge and remove that curved portion. That way these will be able to fit together very nice and smooth and give a very tight joint. So a couple passes on each of the boards took that edge right off and that created a very sharp 90 degree angle in which I can join these and glue them together. The edge now looks extremely good. It creates a very tight joint. The glue that I'm using is this PVC vinyl fence cement. It is very, very strong, waterproof, and will last a long time. So the only thing that was left is to join these boards together with the glue, clamp it all up, and we'll let this sit for about a half an hour. Now this glue dries extremely quick. The key is I wanted to be able to take as much opportunity to get rid of that warp board. Once this all dried, I did take it outside glue and spray painted it and then secured it to the waste board on the CNC machine. And I chose to use screws this time to be able to hold it down. Now it's time to turn the machine on and I'm going to go through the homing process. Now you must understand, I'm using this machine because of the size of this sign. If this sign had been smaller, certainly I would have used a Fox Alien Vasto or one of the other smaller CNC machines. The G-code works just the same. So now we have the machine homed and the XY0 position is right about here. Next thing, I'm going to go ahead and I want to move it right over to this spot. And this is going to be my bottom left corner. And this will be the project home position. This is now the XY0 work position, and that is what I'm going to use each time to be able to start the project. Today I'm using the Universal G-Code Sender for this project. With the machine exactly where I want it for the home position, I just click the X and the Y to reset those, and that sets it at the zero. The next step is to use the uh, touch plate to set the Z-axis to the zero. I have the touch plate in place to be able to set the Z height. And this was the touch plate that I had made. And all it does is simply plugs into my control panel and I connect it to the bit and the touch plate is sitting right on the table on the material itself. From there, I'm going to select the macros that I have and I want this one right here. So I'll click on this and it will start the process of the home to set the zero position. Now at this point, I go to the file mode, bring up the browse window, and go and open the uh, G code that's been created. What I want to start with is this pocket right here, which is that small quarter inch pocket that goes all the way around the sign. I'm going to click open and you can see that that information has been entered right here. Now I want to visualize this and I'll click on this right over here on the far right side to visualize it and then the window will pop up showing exactly what is going to be able to cut. This shows exactly where the bit is right now at the home position and this shows the actual path that it's going to cut and of course, this line is the line that it's going to travel. So this is exactly what I want to be able to uh, cut at this point. So I'll close this out. The only thing that's left now is literally just hit send. I have the machine set at the X, Y, zero position. All I need to do is turn it on and we can begin this process. Now I want to point out to you that typically I will use two different senders. The Universal G-Code Sender, which I'm using today, and I also use the Open Builds Sender. Both are very, very good, and for really no um, particular reason, I chose to use the Universal G-Code Sender today to cut out this project. Now both of these senders, whether you're using the Open Build or the Universal G-Code Sender, will work on the various machines. Now I'm using this on the new car, and it works perfectly fine. 
and that could just have easily used this on the Fox Alien, uh, Vasco, or whatever other machine that you have. So keep that in mind. This is not a software package that's specifically for a particular machine. Now back to the carving itself. You can see with this bit, it cuts extremely clean and removes that PVC for a very clean, clear, sharp cut. And that's what I want to be able to have with this PVC. Now after a couple of passes to be able to get the proper depth and the width of this using this eighth inch bit, this particular tool path is completed and it's returning back to home. So that took a total of 17 minutes and 42 seconds to be able to cut. Now remember, I'm doing this very slowly and taking my time and doing very shallow passes. But the results is amazing. It's looking extremely, extremely good. I changed bit now to the three quarter inch bit to do the clearing of the bulk of this sign. And I'm gonna go through the Z process again. I'm going back to this same macro to be able to adjust the Z height only. Okay, the Z height now has been set. All that's left is to be able to hit start and get this material cleared out. Again, I'm carving this down 0.1 of an inch deep. Now this three quarter inch bit is the largest bit that I have in my inventory uh, bit. So that's why I chose this one. <laughs> Quite frankly, had I had a larger bit, that's what I would have chosen. But this does a very good job. It clears out the bulk of the material and it does it in a fairly short period of time. The one thing you do have to consider is that this does generate a ton of the PVC dust. Now I'm not using dust collection here. I wanted you to be able to see exactly the process and what was taking place so you could see the bit. Generally speaking, yes, I would have a dust collection on to be able to capture the majority of this uh, PVC dust. The good thing is it doesn't take that long to be able to do it and it creates a beautiful finish. Now that it's finished this particular tool path, I'll switch the bit over again to the eighth inch uh, end mill to be able to clean up all these edges and create some beautiful sharp images of these letters and this arrow. As far as the time to be able to do the clearing path on this sign, it took about 52 minutes and 45 seconds to be able to carve. Now I switched over to the eighth inch end mill to be able to cut out all of the uh, detail and get these letters nice and sharp. Now realize before anybody says anything, I could have done this uh, in a little bit different order and not have to duplicate the bits because this is the same bit that I used to cut out that small edge. Now for those of you who are new to the CNC world, it's important to note that this detail path is only cutting around the edges of the letters and around the edge of the arrow. It does not cover the entire area as did that three quarter inch bit. As far as the time, it took about 30 minutes to be able to do all that detail work. Now it's on to the next tool path, which is the textured tool path. It was set up exactly the same. When I hit start, the texture begins to reveal itself. And this gives a, a natural wood carved type look. And I think it creates a very nice background. A little bit different from that perfectly smooth background. Now this does take a lot of extra time, but I think the results and how it looks is absolutely beautiful. Now granted, there's a lot of the PVC dust on here right now that will have to get vacuumed up so that you can see the actual finished process. But this is a beautiful texture that uh, I've used a number of times on different signs and projects that I have done in the past. And yes, it does take some time. This actually took two hours and 59 minutes. On to the last tool path, and this is that quarter inch end mill to cut the sign out from this material. Now, if you recall, we had set this up to do seven passes. Do you really need seven passes? Probably no. I think three passes would have been plenty to be able to cut this out. But here again, slow and steady is what I wanted to be able to do to be able to have a beautiful sign. And I think this is looking absolutely great. As far as the time to be able to cut this out, it only took about 13 minutes to be able to cut this sign out. Cutting out this sign today was an awful lot of fun. It was fun to design and to be able to cut out. And I hope that you've been able to learn a few things about the VCAR Pro and how to design a sign such as this. 
I think this is going to be a great addition in the subdivision, and I can't wait to install it. So if you like this video today, please, by all means, give me a thumbs up. And while you're there, hit that little subscribe button right down below so that you won't miss out on the different videos. I want to try to mix it up with the different types of videos that I do, whether it's the laser, the CNC, or other types of projects. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video that I do, whatever that may be. So for now, bye-bye, and I'll see you next time.